We're out in San Saba County, Texas. Wade is returning to a pond site where he encountered an enormous 10-point whitetail last year, determined to cross paths with him once again. I love water of all sorts. I mean, I love to fish as much as I do hunt, so I'm always drawn to the water. So when I can combine the two together and, and hunt near a water source, it doesn't matter if it's just an old crawdad mud hole or a beautiful stream or uh, you know a pond or a lake edge. I just, those are some of my most memorable hunts for some reason. And, and I guess it's gotta be because of that love of the water. You know, there's just so many game species that are, that are gonna show up around a water hole. This is always one of my favorite times of the day, going out, getting ready to go to a stand, the anticipation's high. We've got an early morning rifle hunt here on a really neat pond. I, I've hunted this pond before uh, and had an encounter that's been ingrained in my mind for a long time. I mean, an absolute giant came in and kind of got out of there, couldn't get a shot, ran up a hill, ran off to the right, and uh, I had always hope to have a chance to get back on this deer again and it looks like we're going to have that chance for the next few days to sit down here on this pond there's a couple of deer running off there and uh, see if we can't get him in i'm going to be hunting one of the most legendary cartridges in the world i'm going to use the 30-06 you know the 30-06 it uh, may not sound as sexy as it used to be but you know the 30-06 has probably killed more deer and big game animals and about any cartridge around. I'm going to be shooting it out of the Thompson Center Compass, which is a great rifle, price point rifle that every day hunters across the nation can pick up and use. And uh, we're going to sit down on this pond and get pretty comfortable, let the sun come up and let the deer tell us the rest of the story. When you're hunting in the mornings, every minute is in your favor. When you're hunting in the evening, every minute that goes away, you're, you're losing ground. You're losing that ability to, to see. This being a morning hunt, I'm literally watching my watch thinking, okay, I'm gonna be able to see a little more. I'm gonna be able to see a little more and what's coming on the sides of us. And you can just see these deer out there, it's shapes moving around. Every now and then I can definitely make out a big rack. You've got all the different sounds, you know, on, on that particular deal, I mean, there's bass feeding on the on the shallows in the grass. You can hear the frogs, uh, you know, the, the hum of the mosquitoes, the beginning of the sounds of the first birds chirping, uh, you know, deer walking through there. You can hear some snort wheezes. You can hear some grunting going on. Heard a little tussling off to the side. You know, if that to me, whether you shoot one or don't shoot one, that's the coolest part of, of getting up at, you know, 4.30 in the morning and riding out to the stand is just hearing that and watching nature wake up. The sun has finally risen, lighting up the area, and those dark shapes are now easily identifiable deer. Wade hopes to see the buck he's been waiting for. I mean, smoked it. That is a giant. I saw that deer last year when I was in here. And he walked out of my life up that hill and he got down right here this morning. We could see him and there's several deer feeding on the side of this hill by this pond. I mean, that's a giant right there. 
And the same thing last year, he got down around that pond, something spooked him, they all took off, run off. And But this time he came back this way instead of going out and I had to take him kind of walking out across there. I mean, he got in that little valley right there walking the whole time and I knew this gun here. I mean, we've hauled it to New Zealand, we've hauled them around Texas, we've hauled them to many places. And I mean, they just shoot great. 30-06 was the caliber today and we're fixing to go put our hands on an old giant right there. Woo! Give me some rusty. <laughs> <laughs> oh man as i kind of look back on the hunt right now i bet i shot that deer probably within 20 yards of where i shot the deer the year before the deer i shot the year before was just up and slightly to the left of where that one uh, was taken at so that pond that little area you talk about special memories and good times and, and a history i don't think it gets much better than that this pond's been good to me. Full of fish, fun to sit here and watch them. Look at them swimming away from the bank right now. Now I'm wanting to speed up. I can see antlers from here. We all know he's down. Look at that. That's a thing of art right there. <laughs> that is beautiful right there. Look at this. Oh, he's even got a little kicker. Gill. Oh, yeah. I mean, that'll leave you speechless. I mean, look at those brow tines. I mean, that may be the longest brow tines of any deer I've ever shot right there. I mean, that brow tine is huge. I mean, look at those twos and the threes, the way they curve in. He's got mass all the way around. Kind of crab claws in on that side. When you shoot deer like this, you end up being a little speechless at the end. You just kind of look at them and go, wow. I mean, those bases, I mean, I can't even get my fingers all the way around them. Holds it out to there. We got in here this morning to set up and you could see several deer out there just kind of milling around and, you know, really well before we obviously could even legally shoot. You could see their shapes. And there was another really nice 10 and several other deer. You could hear them snort wheezing. There was fighting going on. And when they do that, you know, they'll get to running around and spooking out of the area and changing position. And I just literally spent time looking at the ground. Then I'd look up through my binoculars, waiting for it to get daylight. And they got to running, chasing and fighting. And next thing you know, they all kind of cleared out. There's probably a dozen deer in there. And then, he came back down the side of that hill and just kind of kept walking and was working towards this little oak mot. And I knew this little ditch was right here from last year. And when he stepped up, I mean, he just gave me everything you could ever, ever want. Perfectly broadside, just right across the pond, squeeze the trigger. I'm shooting the TC Compass with a 30 6 a Cabela's HD Instinct scope on there. I mean, everything's lit up perfect. And the end result was dead right there of a giant buck. Well, after an exciting morning, Wade has come out victorious after dreaming about this massive buck for the last year. And that certainly is one beautiful 10-point Texas whitetail. The serenity of hunting across a pond reflects how rewarding it can be to get back to the basics. Well, as we wrap up and make our way back to home base, Wade has a few more thoughts on what he enjoys most about hunting, the legendary whitetail deer. White-tailed deer are so cool because they have such different characteristics. Every one of them's different. Every year they're different. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller. Sometimes they get some funky points. Sometimes they, you know, they're just as traditional as can be. That's why I think, you know, white tail are, you know, North America's the most sought after game animal. I would argue that point for days just because you can hunt them in so many different ways, means, methods, and manners, and states, and locations, and they're all so cool. They've all got a unique character. They've all got a unique, uh, attitude to them. This particular buck is, is, I love these kind of deer where their tines are chocolate and they curve in. I mean, uh, what a buck, just uh, what a buck. Not only to fill the freezer, but to hang on the wall.